morning, open your Bibles to Joshua chapter 1. It's so good to see you here today. Uh, wow, I went, I slipped out into the foyer while they were baptizing a few moments ago, and it never gets old. It just never gets old. To see the tears, to see people making a commitment, they're going public with their faith, they've made a private decision to follow Jesus, and they've prayed, they've asked God for forgiveness, they've called upon the name of the Lord, and when you go out there and you see them following the Lord in the waters of baptism, it's just exciting, and it never gets old. And uh, I just wanted to say what an honor it is to be a part of a church that people are surrendering their lives to the Lord, and they're taking steps steps, spiritual steps. We're all taking spiritual steps together. I'm in a different place in my journey than you are on yours. It doesn't mean that I'm better than you. What it means is we're all moving together into God's plans and purposes that he has for us. Isn't it good to be a part of a church that people are taking spiritual steps? I just love it. It never gets old, never gets old. Uh, if you are new here, please stop by the Connect Corner, as my introverted friend Joe said. Just walk away with a, a free gift. Uh, that, that would be a, a good thing for you today. Joshua chapter 1, if you're ready to get into the Word of God. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, I'm going to read you several verses here this morning, but I just think it's, it's good to read, uh, to read the Word of the Lord. Here we go. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass... That the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, uh, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land that I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I have said to Moses. Verse 4, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. You will not leave, I will not leave you nor forsake you. Verse 6, be strong and of good courage. Look at your neighbor and say, be strong. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it, for do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you... I, then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Verse 9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this word. I thank you, Father, that your word is true. I thank you, Lord, that we can look to your word to know how to live our life. I ask you, Father, that you would help me to speak what you put in my heart and help, help Lord, the, 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 the people, the ears of the people to hear and to respond to what you're saying to us today. I pray this in Jesus' mighty and great name. Amen and amen. Amen. Great to be in the house of the Lord. Love looking at passages of Scripture and seeing what God has to say to us today. And that's exciting. At Easter time, uh, we did kind of a poll, and we asked everyone at Easter, there was a, a little card that you received, and it was, what is it that you need to hear from the Lord? What are some topics that you want to hear or that you need to, to, to study? And so the last two weeks, you, know, you have heard uh, about biblical prophecy and end times. And so that was in response to the card uh, that you filled out. And I thought Pastor Holden did an outstanding job of, of opening scripture and showing us that we have a hope to look forward to. It's not scary times. No, this is an exciting time to be living in. And so we looked at, for two weeks, we looked at biblical prophecy. And also on that poll, uh, you said that you would like to hear some sermons or a sermon about anxiety and fear or, or anxiety and stress. 
So these are some topics that you've asked for. So today is in response to that. And uh, so today I want to give you uh, what God has placed upon my heart. I want to give you just a definition of stress. This just comes out of the dictionary, but this is, you say, Pastor, I don't need a definition of stress. I live with it. <laughs> Listen to me. This is what, the, Bible, this is what the, the dictionary says about stress. It's a mental or emotional strain or tension. Anybody feel some tension in the room? resulting from adverse or very demanding circumstances. How many of you have ever gone through some, some very demanding circumstances? Oh, okay, only seven of you have done that. Well, y'all said you wanted to hear a message on anxiety and stress, so that's why we're giving it to you. See, external things can create pressure in us, these external things, these things that you have no control over. You don't have really any control over the economy, uh, you, you barely have control over yourself. <laughs> uh, we don't have any control over the politics of the day. Uh, we don't have any control over some of our family members. How many of y'all got one of those family members? They can create some pressure in us, those things on the outside that is external things that we have no control over. Anxiety is this, these internal things, though, because these things can be going okay around us, but we still feel a little anxiety. You, anybody you know what I'm talking about? See, I, I understand this completely because uh, it, this, this anxiety is, uh, is sometimes part of my journey as well. As you know, I'm not exempt from anxiety. I'm not exempt from these things that we're talking about today. We learn how to manage these things. Internally, we can be filled with anxiety, even if there's nothing wrong going on around us. But anxiety can be present during moments of even great anticipation. I see this at weddings. I do a lot of weddings. And you're going to have, you're going to have two things. You're going to have uh, a lot of anxiety and, and, and a lot of anticipation at the same event. It, it's, it's just true. John's shaking his head. He's done a, lot. He's done a hundred weddings probably. And, and at these weddings, you, you've got great anticipation for a life that we're walking into. But you also got some anxiety. Is, is, is everything going to be perfect on the cake? It, it, it is the, you know what I'm talking about? Anxiety. Uh, have you ever felt heavy in your spirit or worried about how a business deal is going to turn out? Have you ever, ever been worried about starting a new business or a new school? Uh, there's some people in the room today. You're about to start a new school. You're about to move locations to a different place, a different school that you've never attended. And there's going to be some new faces there with some new names and some people that you don't know. And you're about to go and start that school. That can create some anxiety. It can create, even though some anticipation, there could be joy and anxiety present at the same time. Have you ever had to deal with some aging parents? Have you ever had to deal with, with your kids? <laughs> if you've got kids, you've got to deal with your kids sometimes. And uh, we've got a pair of twins right there. And you're going to have to deal with them twins as they grow up. Uh, Delilah and Lily, we're going to have to deal with those kids. Have you ever had to deal with a health scare? Have you ever had to deal with some things that you didn't know how it was going to turn out? That's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of stress going on here. But I got some good news for you. How many of y'all know we can look to God's Word and we can get some good news? Philippians 4.4 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. God is near. He is with you. Our God is with you and He is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, the peace of God, how many of you need some peace? And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. That's some good news for some people today. I believe the Bible is true. I believe every word in the Bible. I believe that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I believe that he can do miraculous things in us and for us. I want you to hear me say that. You believe that? I also believe that God has given us good Christian counselors. 
I believe he's given to us professionals, those that have gone to school and they are, they're believers and they're, 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 I believe God given us doctors. I believe God gives us medicine, medication sometime that we need sometimes. And, and again, God, God, let me tell you something. There's no shame. There's no shame in that. If you take blood pressure medicine, then don't get on somebody that, you know, needs some, they need some medicine. You don't know what, what they're going through. They've met, they've met with their, their doctor. They've met with the professional. So I, I believe that we can call upon the name of the Lord and we can look at what God has for us, but we can also have a good counselor. But we can also go to a good doctor. I believe that. We've got good Christian counselors in this body, in this fellowship, and I talk to them from time to time. I think it's a good thing. In fact, I, I see a counselor every, every month. You say, Pastor, you've got problems? Well, yeah, you're here, so i got problems, you know. <laughs> I got problems, you know. So everybody, and you know I'm just teasing you. I love you all. There was a pastor, he asked me one time, he said, Pastor, what's the difference in pastoring a small church and a big church? I said, well, in a big church, you just got more problems. You just got more problems. Why? Because you got more people. People have problems. We all have problems. I have problems. Sometimes you need to sort through some things with some, some people that can help you that have the tools to sort through those things with. And I believe a life uh, can be overwhelming sometimes. Sometimes you have seasons in your life that a season after season even, you can have several seasons that string together that, that really it seems like life is kind of punching you in the face. And sometimes life can do that. Everything might be going okay with you right now, but I promise you there's somebody sitting in close proximity to where you're seated that they're going through the most difficult season of their life. And in a moment like this, and in a room like this, we, we look around. That's why we have compassion for people. That's why God puts, puts compassion in us, that we would speak a good word to somebody, an encouraging word that we know that they're going through it. My wife is going through it right now. Her family's going through it right now. She just left her mother's side. Her mother is in hospice. And she's just left her mother's side, and we're walking through this journey of, of pain and and. And, 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 and it's difficult. But we also have great joy around us as well. Great things happening at the same time. And this is what I call life. I want to tell you a very transparent story. I'm going to try to take less time than I did in the first service. I went way too long on this. But I want you to understand something. It, none of us, see, pastors are not exempt from anxiety. We're not exempt from issues and problems. In October of 2019... Uh, my mother passed away, and I did her service in October, mid-October. Um, I had three months of my life that was just overwhelming. And then really, if you want to be honest, the next six months were just traumatic. And then if you really want to get honest, the next year, year and a half was crazy. It was, seemed like every season there was something new, something else, something else happening. And so I'm just telling you a transparent story so you will know that we're in this thing together. We need one another. But my mom had passed away and I did her service. And two weeks later, after, after I did her service, I found myself uh, marrying uh, my son and, and, and my new daughter-in-law. And so there was pain, but there was also joy present at the same time. And then just really just uh, uh, a week later, I found myself with about 40 of you in Israel. We had been preparing for a trip, and I had been preparing for well over a year of getting this trip together. And, and I was able to invite my dad. My dad went along. Man, we had a great time in the Lord in Israel. And uh, we, we, ran, we about ran him to death. <laughs> we, about, we, we just ran his legs off that, that trip. But, but, yeah, we did. Dad's sitting right over there. He says, you sure did, son. But, but we found ourselves in Israel, and we just, my, my mother had just passed, and I, I just, uh, we just gained a new daughter-in-law, and it was just, she, Bella's wonderful. She, if you don't know Bella, she's just a joy. And that's just a, a beautiful thing. And now we find ourselves in, in Israel. And while I'm in Israel, I was named the interim pastor of this church. And it was like swing and blow after blow, and it was like uh, anticipation but anxiety. Uh, what, what, what's going on? Lord, what are you doing? I, I don't know. Uh, and then it was five days after we returned from Israel. It's Thanksgiving. <laughs> We're here for Thanksgiving. And it's the first, the first major holiday without my mother. 
And so there's grieving still happening, but then there's joy present as well because we are a family of thanksgiving. We were giving thanks for everything that God had put in our life. We were we was living out Philippians 4 right there. We was giving God thanks for everything in prayer and supplication. We were just saying, God, we, we, you're a good God. We've got some, some grief around us and we've got some, some times that's, that's not so great, but we've also got a great hope. We also have some wonderful things happening as well. And so three days after Thanksgiving, I'm on a plane and I'm heading to Peru for a pastor's conference that I had been preparing for for many months. And I find myself looking in the faces of about 300 pastors and leaders and I'm preaching and the whole time I'm preaching, I'm thinking, I need to be home. What in the world am I doing here? Well, there's some things I don't know. I, I need to be getting up to speed with the finances of the church and the insurance and all the things, the things I don't know. How many of you know there can be anticipation and some anxiety at the same time? There can be some pain and some joy at the same time. It's up to us to look to the Lord in these moments because the Lord can give us peace in the midst of our storms. I knew that there was things I didn't know. I don't know what I don't know. And then it seems like I came home and then we started doing the Christmas services. And, 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 and it was just wonderful. The, the people, I, I, I had no idea what I'm doing. Don't, don't tell anybody. But, but I, what am I doing? I don't know. But I'm just putting one foot in front of the other because God's called me. For such a time as this. And so we started having Christmas services. And then Christmas services started into January services. Then we started having some like mid-February services. And about 200 people more was in the church in about February than there was in, in, in December. And I was like, well, praise God, maybe I can do this. <laughs> Maybe, maybe you have called me to do this, Lord. I, I don't know. And so just in the moment that I was starting to kind of get my legs underneath me, how many of you know what happened next? COVID. Lord, I thought I could do this, but now I'm the worst leader in the history of leaders. I have no clue what to do. Is it okay for me to say that? Nobody knew what to do. That's what... That was what gave me hope as I looked around and I was talking to pastors that had been pastoring for 40 years. And I said, what in the world's going on? And they said, I have no idea. And so that's when I just leaned into God. I said, God, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't ask for this. All I know is you placed me here and you called me for this. And if I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do. And if you tell me to do it, I'm going to do it. I just need you to speak to me because I have no idea what to do. But if you'll tell me what to do, I'm going to do it. How many of you know that's a good place to be? In the middle of, I don't know what to do, but if you tell me, I'm going to do it. Mm. So, in the middle of all that, I told you that whole story to let you know that pain and joy can coexist. That trauma and, 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 and the unknowns and all of those things, there can be anticipation and excitement at the same time. That you're experiencing some unknown things that keeping you up at night. Can I just say that God is greater than whatever is making you anxious? 1 John 4, 4 says, He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. The New Living Translation says it like this, The Spirit who lives in you is greater than the Spirit who lives in the world. Our opening text today was Joshua. This fifth book of the Old Testament, Joshua, he was a protege of Moses. And, and, and he had demonstrated some great courage. And God is calling Moses in this moment where, where uh, God is calling Joshua in this moment where Moses is dead. There's grief and there's mourning, but God is saying in the middle of the grief, and in the middle of the morning, now is your time. I'm calling you, Joshua, for such a time as this. And you are going to lead my people. Anxiety can be present at the during moments of great anticipation. And this is probably what Brother Joshua was uh, described or what was happening in his life in this very moment. Joshua experienced anxiety and anticipation. Have you ever been there? If you're about to go off to a new school or if you're about to expand your business, or if you're about to, to get married, there's some anticipation. But there's probably some anxiety that goes along with that. I can only imagine what Joshua could have been experiencing that day. Courage is what we need to give us the strength to step out. In the moment where you feel paralyzed because of your anxiety, you need some courage. I needed courage that day. 
when I knew that COVID hit and we was going to have to shut the, the church down, I got on the phone with about nine other pastors in this city, nine guys that I, I, I admire. I'd been doing this about 10 minutes and they had been pastoring for years. And we all prayed together. We looked to the Lord and we just did what the only thing that we knew to do. And I said, Lord, if you'll show me what to do, I'm going to do it. I needed some courage. Joshua needed some courage that day. Joshua was called by God and he was commissioned by God to be the successor of Moses. The power of courage is this inside quality that all of us need. Joshua needed that. It's easy to step into things that are known, but it's very difficult to step into things that are unknown. Joshua was facing a major step of unknowns. When you need courage, I want you to write these three things down. Lord, help me to get to the third point. I didn't get to the third point in the first service, but this is a really good crowd. We're going to be here till 3 o'clock. I'm just teasing you. Get something to write with right now. I want you to write this down. I want you to write at least two of these things down that I have today that God's put in my spirit. We're going to look at this. When you need some courage, is there anybody in this house? You could use some courage right now. Is there anybody in this house, there, there's, there's some good things going on, but there's also some unknowns going on in your life. Is there anybody like that or am I alone in this place? Let me tell you something. God is with you in the middle of this journey. Three things that you need to know when you need some courage. Number one, let's look and see what Joshua did. Number one, honor the past, but don't remain there. That's exactly what Joshua did. Look at Joshua 1.1. 1, 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua. Moses was their fearless leader. Moses had heard from the Lord. He was a proven leader and he saw God face to face. But now he's dead. The children of Israel, they're all in mourning and they're probably thinking to themselves, you know, God met with Moses and gave him the Ten Commandments and part of the Red Sea. And, and, and it, but who is this guy? <laughs> There's always going to be some people that's got some things to say. God is now calling Joshua. And now the people are looking to him. But too many times we look to a man instead of the God that that man served. Too many times we look to a man to know what to do when we should be looking at God. And God was calling Joshua for such a time as this. Moses is dead, but the power came from God. We honor the past, but we don't stay there. We need to remember the testimonies. We need to remember the miracles. We need to remember every time that God has provided for us in the past. And there's some people today that you've lived a few years and you've been walking this journey for a little while. What you need to do is you need to be writing down some stories for the next generation because we need to be encouraged. There's some people in this room. I need you to write your story down. Make sure that we hear about the awesome things that God has called you, called you out of, all the things where God showed up right on time when he provided for you, when he healed you, when he did all these things, because there's a generation coming on, they need to hear these stories. This is a good thing. We celebrate what God has done. We give glory to God, but God brings us from glory to glory into new seasons, and that's what God was doing right here with Joshua. We're celebrating the past. We honor the past, but we don't get stuck in the past. God uses every generation to do his will and what he's, what he's doing in that generation. Now, I love the old songs. In fact, I want to sing one. How many of y'all want to sing with me for a second? Can you give me a D? <clears throat> I need your participation. I exalt thee. Come on, sing it with me. I exalt thee. Give me some harmony, will you? I exalt thee. I hear some harmony. Come on. Oh, Lord. Right over there, I got you. I exalt I hear you over there, Alto. I exalt. Mm. I exalt. Oh, Lord. Give yourself a hand. That was awesome. A lot of times we come in here, we sing that song for 20 minutes, and then we don't go outside and exalt him. But that's not my point today. 
I'll preach that another time. Y'all come back. Y'all, y'all want to come back for that one? <laughs> but, you know, I love the things that God has done in the past. Now, I love to sing the old songs. We, we sang one this morning. I, you know, we're not going to abandon the things of the past. But here's, here's the beautiful thing. God is writing a brand new chapter in his book and he's using the people of this generation he's speaking to people I was out there in the foyer when nine people got baptized a lot of young ones and I walked up to them and I was so excited it never gets old I looked at them in the face and I said this is just the beginning God is going to use you he's got plans for you he's going to use you for his purposes in this generation and I believe that with all of my heart you know you heard your children then you hear your children now you are the same God you are the same God he healed back then and he heals today he provided then he provides today he's the same yesterday today and forever but we serve a creative God he created you with the creativity to do what he's calling us to do he uses each generation and he speaks to each generation the what he's trying to exercise in that generation You moved in power then. He still moves in power now. He was a healer then. He's healed my body. I have a testimony of healing in my body. And let me tell you something today. He's a healer today. He can heal just like he healed then. He just like he can heal me. He healed me back when I was in 11th grade. And I'm still healed. We never forget what God has done. We remember his faithfulness. All my life you have been faithful. Hmm. All my life you have been great is thy faithfulness. Who knows that one? Morning by morning, new mercies I. Thy hand hath provided. Y'all are singing bunch. Great is thy faithfulness. Come on, do it again. Great is thy faithfulness. One more time. Great is thy faithfulness. Wow, this is fun. <laughs> Lord, unto me. He's the same God. You heard your children then, but you hear your children now too. Write your story down. We've got to encourage the next generation. We're going to honor the past. We're going to remember his power. We're going to build some monuments, but we don't, we don't worship the monuments. We worship the God of the power of what he has done. Worship God for, the, for performing the miracles. We thank God. Oh, my God, my God, I need you now. I thank God for the past, but I'm thankful for our future. I'm thankful for the next generation. My ceiling's going to be their floor. In fact, we had 170 kids at kids camp. We had over 100 at YTH camp. We have almost 200 kids here every Wednesday night. We had 20 people that went to Peru. We saw over 31 salvations on that trip. We drilled some water wells on that trip, and Evan was trying to tell you, but he, he was so excited about what he had just experienced. But let me tell you the cool news about what just happened in Peru. The good news is that, that uh, my son, where you at, Matt? Where you at? Matt's right at, stand up, Matt. Matt's right there with my beautiful new daughter-in-law. They've been married, they've been married since 2019, five, five years. 17, they've been married 17 years from 2019. That's my son right now. You, you can sit down. Y'all, let me sit down, boy. <laughs> is it okay if we just have fun? In life, there's too much stress. There's too much anxiety. The house of the Lord is a place that we, we should be able to ex- experience his glory. He, you know, he, Mary Hart's good like a medicine. Amen? Now, let me tell you a story about Matt. I don't have time for this, but I'm going I'm to I'm take it anyway. A few years ago, 
we were drilling a well in a place called Santa Rita. And we hit, we hit a rock. And they, I didn't know. I was inside the clinic, and these guys were out there doing hard labor in the sun, and I didn't really care about doing that, so I was inside. And they came in, and they said, Pastor, it doesn't look like we're going to be uh, successful drilling this well, this well today. And I said, have you all prayed? <laughs> they said, well, no, we haven't thought to do that. We've just been out there, you know, turning the drill bit. And they were exhausted. Matt was out there just kind of going through the motion. He, they'd hit rock, and they'd been the same level for well over 45 minutes. I've told you this story before, but there's always new people coming into the fellowship. All I know is I walked out there, and so just something came on me. He said, pray. Just pray to God. And so I just said, Lord, I just ask you, I know it's your will. You've sent us 3,500 miles here. We've spent a lot of time trying to d- drill this well. But Lord, right now, what we need you, we want to give these people water. Will you give these people water? And I said, in the name of Jesus. And the moment I said the name of Jesus, that, that drill bit went through that rock. It dropped about three, four feet. Is that the truth, Matt? It dropped about four, five, did you say five feet? It dropped about four or five feet. It went straight down the moment I said in Jesus' name. And that place still has water to this day. That well still works at Santa Rita. Now, my son, my son, he was a believer. He was a Christian, but he had never witnessed a miracle. And in that day, in that moment, my son became a true believer in my God. He saw our God. He saw, he saw the God that we call upon do a miracle in that moment. And my God really, truly became his God in that moment. Hallelujah is right. Let me tell you something. He was there at that spot that Evan was talking about. And they hit that that rock again. And Matt had been there before. And because he'd been there before, because he'd witnessed God, because he'd heard the testimony, he said, we got to pray. And the moment they started praying, what happened? The same thing happened again. And there's water in that place right now. Why? Because a man of God stood up and said, let's pray. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. I'm not going to get to that third point. I was praying a few weeks ago. And the Lord spoke to me a word for the next generation for this church. Now, you know I believe in the next generation. I spend a lot of time with the next generation. I don't know what they're saying half the time, but I love them. I just smile a lot and I just say, I love you guys. No idea what they're saying half the time. By the way, people know when you love them and when you don't. So I was just praying and I said, God, I'm looking to you. And God spoke to me that this is going to be a place that not only experiences, have experiences with the Lord, but this is going to be a place that teaches the deep things, the deep teachings of God. This is what God is calling us to do right here in this church because I'm so tired of seeing, and I know God is tired of seeing our young people go off to college and not know what it is that they're, that they, that they, they, they don't really have a real depth of that knowledge and then they, they end up going astray. And so what I know is God is saying to this place, we, we got to, we got to, dig some deep wells. We need some people who walk with the Lord for many years to get in the game and say, put me in coach. I want to, I want to, I want to disciple some young people. I want to tell them my story. I want to tell them what God has done for me and that God can do it for them. But I need to be teaching. I need to be discipling. In fact, if you, if we need, we have, we have some needs in kids church. We have some needs in YTH. And I'm telling you, if some of the older folks of this church, mm, you got, you, you need to get in the game. There's some things you need to say. You've got some experiences you need to teach. But God gave me that word for such a time as this. God has a bright future for our church. He's got a bright future for the next generation. God had a bright future for Israel, and he spoke, and God has a bright future for you. He was calling Israel into a new time, and he was going to use Joshua. In fact, if you need to grow in courage, we, we honor the past, we don't remain there. We remember the miracles. We know where the miracles came from. He provided them. He healed. But verse 2, it says, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua. This generation needs to learn how to hear from God's voice. The Joshua represented a new era in that time. He was God's choice for leadership in that moment, and God spoke to him that day. God was going to do something new. God wants to, can I just make a declaration over you? God wants to do something new in you. He wants to do something new in your family. He wants to do something new in your children, in your job, in in, in your home. God is waiting for you to take a step to do what he's calling you to do for right now. He's got a 
bright future for you. He wants to give you a fresh anointing with a fresh anticipation. When you need some courage, learn to do things, write this down, learn to do things afraid. Why? Because God is with you. Look at what God says in verse 6, in verse 7, in verse 9. God speaks to Joshua. He says, be strong and be courageous. Hold on, even when you're scared. Even when you don't know what the next three, four, five, six steps looks like, you just know that God has, he, God spoke to you and says, you need to open up a new school in Northwest Arkansas. I'm looking at Adrian Cameron. She says, I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't know how to do this, but I'm going to do it. God's going to show you the next step and the next step and the next step, and that's what he does. He's waiting for some people to say yes to what he's calling you to do. We want everything to be easy. We want everything to line up. And we want the whole plan. But you would not need faith if that's how God did it. Learn how to do it afraid. The question is not do you have what it takes. The question is are you available? Are you willing? Are you obedient to take a step? Because when God asks you to do it, he will equip you to make it happen. God says it. You just go do it. We're just vessels. Some of us never even say, God, use me. Some of us never say, God, send me because we're paralyzed by anxiety. We never say, God, I'm open to you. We say things like, God, what would you call me to do? I'm nobody. I've, I've never been used by God. I imagine that's what Joshua was saying about this, that day. My greatest fear, y'all, is my greatest anxiety, honestly, is not that God would use me. My greatest anxiety is that I, don't, I won't ever do what he's calling me to do. God's put a plan in me. He's put a dream in me. God, God gave me a next step, and I've got to do the next step. He'll do that for you. I want to be used by God in a new season because I know this. He's with me. In fact, be of good courage, church. God is with you. Be of good courage. The Lord is is with you. Joshua was facing some fear and some pressure and probably some anxiety, and he was in the pressure cooker of his life, but God made him for that very moment. God had made him for that moment. He, he was thinking, there were some people, they were there, they were saying, he's not Moses. Who's he? What's he ever done? There were some people saying that. There's always going to be somebody with a negative voice saying something in your ear. And if they don't say it in your ear, they're saying it to other people and it gets back to you. Those are negative Nellies. <laughs> Sorry if your name's Nellie. I didn't mean it. <laughs> Listen to me for a moment. There's always going to be some people that tries to hijack the destiny that God has on your life. Somebody's going to say, well, you've never run a business. What do you know? There's going to be some people that are going to say, well, you know, you were a loser then and you're a loser now. Wherever you go, there you are. That's what they're, People are going to say stuff like that. Maybe you've never run a small group. Maybe you've never discipled a men's group. Maybe you've never worked in kids' ministry. Maybe you've never decided to put yourself out there. Maybe, maybe you know God is telling you to take a step, and, and you've just not taken the one step he's told you to take because you don't have it all figured out. Well, welcome to the journey. <laughs> That's the way God works. Because you need some courage. And I want, you to need, I want you to know something. When you take a step in God, you cannot fail because he's with you. Be of good courage. Our God is with you. Look at your neighbor and say, be of good courage. Be courageous today. Courage is, courage is a mind or a spirit that enables us to face danger or oppositions or challenges with a calmness and a firmness. Having courage is not the absence of fear. It is the willingness to step out in the face of fear. I'll be honest with you. The enemy... The enemy tells me every time I get up out of that seat and walk 10 steps this way, the enemy says, who do you think you are? What do you think you're doing? You're just a truck driver. You don't know what you're doing. You're going to stand up there in front of them people? And I just have to tell the devil, stand back because my God is with me. I have to, sell my, I have to tell myself, self, <laughs> talk to myself, I'm going crazy. Self, be courageous. The Lord, my God, is with us. Let's go. We can do this because he's with us. I can do anything. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because my God is with me. Somebody needs to hear that today. 
God is with me. What I have to look at, when, when the enemy starts telling me, what, what do you got to say? You really think they're going to care about anything you got to say? Because, I mean, who are you anyway? This is what I have to tell the devil. I've been delivering for a long time. I've been a delivery boy for a long time. I'm going to get up there and deliver God's word. And whatever they do with it, that's up to them. But I'm just going to deliver the truth. I'm not going to apologize for God's word. I'm not going to apologize for what God says. I'm just going to say what needs to be said. And I'm going to say it with boldness. Because why? Because God is with me. God is with me. Be of good courage for God. Daryl, God is with you. Darla, God is with you. Adrian, God is with you. You can do it. If he calls you to it, you can do it. He'll give you one step. If you, let me tell you something. There's somebody here today. Spirit of God is on me right now to tell you. God has called you into a step. And you have been in this anxiety-filled paralysis. And you've not taken a step. Today is the day that you're going to take a step forward. In fact, here's what we're going to do. I want you to stand up all over this audience right now. You've been an incredible crowd. And what you could do is you could go home the same way that that you came. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite our prayer team to come forward right now because here's, here's what I know. When you agree with one another in prayer, when you step out and make yourself vulnerable enough to say, God's called me to do something. There's some people today, God's called you to do something. He's waiting on you to take one step. It's not will you take one step. God has another step for you to take. Just like those people took steps of, uh, 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 in water baptism today, you got a next spiritual step too. But there's some businesses that's about to be birthed. There's some people that you're going to be going to a new school and you say, I'm a little bit fearful right now. I'm a little anxiety ridden, but I want to pray with somebody that has some faith because I believe this is going to be the best year God has for me. If you're going up to Fayetteville and you're going up to the University of Arkansas this year, let me tell you something. God is with you. Be of good courage. Be of good cheer. God's calling you. You're going to get your education, and you're still going to serve God on the other side of your education. I'm prophesying that over you right now. Our prayer team's already here. There's already people responding. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. We're going to sing a simple song. And you say, Pastor, I, I need to take a step. I need to take a step, and I'm going to pray with some people. I need to pray right now with some people who will pray over me right now. If you're about to go to a new school, you're about to start a business, there's some people on their way down here. I'm just waiting on somebody to take a step.